Okay, here we are again. <laughs> what I'm going to do is, um, if anyone's out there, first of all, give me a wee shout just to make sure that the sound's not being all crazy again. What I had done is, because there's multiple audio sources or things that can give me audio input, I had one of them open, so there was a little bit of a delay. And according to OBS, I have got one audio stream going now. And I have got my video capture devices going. I have also got chopped cam. Look at that. Right, anyway, so this the 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 point of this little video um is about setting up the embouchure in such a way that it can assist you or you learn how to how to pitch notes, find the notes on the instruments. Um, I think in the brass world, between trumpets and trombones, tenor horns, cornets, flugel horns, uh, E flat, B flat, tubas, baritones, or pretty much anything that's valved or slide orientated that uh, that doesn't have um multiple of keys like um all the woodwinds and reeds etc. Pianos, guitars, pretty much everything else. Yeah, I'm kind of making a big sob story for myself here, aren't I? Um, <laughs> it's not about that. What it's actually about is the fact that we have to find the instrument's notes. We have to find what's going on when we pitch them, when we play them. So well, I'm going to keep an eye on YouTube, um, Facebook this time, and maybe someone can give me a wee shout if it's, uh, if it's all going well. Right, so with a couple of my newer students and and this isn't just like the, the absolute beginners one of my one of my young lads he's, he's absolutely phenomenal i've been working with him now for almost two years <laughs> when he started i hadn't realized for whatever reason that he didn't have his front teeth they'd fallen out and they'd yet to grow in so anyway long story there he's doing great and i have got students from his age um i think he's nine now all all the way up to like Post 50, let's just say that. So, one of the problems that I have found that they have been having is like is like pitching the notes. Um, and this isn't for all of them, but everyone's at different stages, etc. But knowing where they are on the instrument and being able to pick out a note and just be able to play that note, it's a challenge. It's it's a it's an issue for a lot of us as brass players. Um the story that I like to relay is that I played a show where for the whole first act we were using a shaker, just a trumpet. There was nobody, no brass was doing anything, none of the blowers. Um, and that was great, it was fine. And then the next chart, nice easy entry. Then they had to rewrite that first chart. So I still had loads of shaker to do. So that was about two and a half, three minutes. And they pretty much wrote this string part for trumpet. And they came in on a, a B, top B, and me by myself that was it and believe me that was like one of the hardest notes i have ever had to play and it was not right on many occasions later on in the show towards the end there was like a massive big f sharp out in the middle of nowhere bang down the center nine times out of ten no issues there this 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 note at the beginning of the show really really difficult so when we are exposed to just playing our instrument and playing scales and stuff it's all all that stuff kind of happens but at some point we really have to find a way to get inside the instrument and work out where the notes are we've got all of our valves etc and, and that's fine but you press a valve down any note could come out almost and the higher you go that becomes more of an issue so one of the things that um i've been going into and this isn't a digression this is this is quite relevant is the jaw setup so if i go to my chops cam and i show you my teeth i've done this before i think anyone who's looked at, looked at listened to any of the videos or, or any of the stuff that i've done you know my teeth are an absolute mess so here's a nice little view on chops cam so you can see the bottom teeth are kind of doing all their all the other thing they actually kind of go in towards the left hand side of my mouth and i see uh I hear that sounds loose, and uh, that not quite as loose. So, all that's going on in my face, and on top of the Maggio work, etc. Um, and some recent chats with uh, with Tristan and and Alan and stuff as well, and, and a whole bunch of other people exploring the jaw position, 
and having our teeth touching together, etc., has been, I wouldn't say enlightening, because I've done a fair degree of that with the Cat Anderson method and things, and the Sex Note study, which is part of this little study that I run, or I, I, I've been working on with, with, my, with my students. So by having the teeth together like this, just the very, very tips of the teeth, so I forgot to chops come again. Right, I can't get a teeth all properly together because they're all wonky and I don't have to go to the side and stuff. It's not great. Anyway, so, but I can still get a basic alignment of my teeth and what that should allow me to do and what it feels like it's doing is it allows me to balance my embouchure in such a way where the lips are parallel or across from each other and the mouthpiece can pretty much just engage on there and then ultimately we have... And that's kind of it. That's very, 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 very the, the basics of it. So I touched on this very, very briefly in the last live video that I did, well, the precursor to the Maggio um, warm-up D. One of the things that I've been doing is starting off the day with my teeth together. So that's uh, all going to focus. There we go. Relax some more, Monsieur. And just blowing through. And keep my teeth together. Now, I'm not trying to create any sound there. What I will do after that then is try to create a sound. So pretty much it's just this. And the way I think about this in my head is it's like it's, a, it's just the follow on from from our lip flap. There's a little bit more manipulation in the corners and trying to get that buzz to happen. And then what I will do is I will try and get a note to come out. So I usually go for like a, just a bottom C because it's there. So that's our bottom C. So let's do this again. <laughs> And that's pretty much it. I don't try and do any more. I don't try and go up and down scales or anything. I'm, I've am i never really got on that well with free buzzing. I've looked into it loads and loads and loads. Um, there, are, there are loads of people out there doing fantastic demonstrations into the whys and benefits of free buzzing. There's a fantastic video with Doc Severinsen. 1993, I think it is, doing uh, one of his master classes. And then man, the, the list goes on, you know, but that, that was one of the ones that I, I watched most recently. So that little thing there in terms of trying to make sure that I suppose my embouchure is aligned just really means that when the instrument's on my face, I, I have a, a good starting position. Now, when we get into going back to the kids and stuff, I've employed a kind of variation of the um, the Caruso six note technique. So obviously I don't have them doing the Caruso technique. They're, they're beginner trumpet players that pretty, pretty much mess them up. But what I do want them to do is to experience having a, a nice, relaxed set embouchure and then just blowing air through the embouchure into the trumpet. So going back to the little warm up thing that I do with having the teeth closed together and just doing. Whether or not the teeth are open or closed, that, that's going to happen. The lips are going to engage forward or they're going to engage into the surface of the mouthpiece, etc. And and then between the air that's coming out of us and whatever meets meets the other side inside the trumpet, you'll, you'll get you'll get a buzz eventually. So what we hope, or what I hope we'll get, is that we'll learn to find what the most natural position is for our embouchure. Now, 
to get into the plane side of it, what I'll do with them is start off with the warm up we just looked at. So that is just doing teeth together, breath in through the nose. I won't even get them to buzz because uh, because I'm not a, a confident free buzzer. I, I don't feel it's it's worth their time me trying to tutor them in it because I'm I'm not that very well versed in it. Now what we'll do next is I'll take them through the process, which is pretty much just teeth together, relax your lips, breath in through the nose, and then when you let the air out, just open the jaw a little bit, just relax into it where you would normally be. So obviously you can't see anything because my mouth is going to be closed, but this is what it would look like. We'll do it first from the side, so. So obviously I'm not forming a note there. When they go to engage a the note, then they're, they're usually at this stage now where they can play a note on the instrument. But the precursor to this that I do with a lot of them, like through my other YouTube videos, where it's like you're starting a note and you're blowing gently, etc. That that still is all gold and the lead pipe stuff, etc. I I do all that with them and I try and I try and get them familiar and comfortable with that from a very 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 early age. I wish I had um, came to it late, but I still think it's all beneficial. So when they have the instrument against the mouth, when they take a breath in through the nose, and they let the air out. Really, I want them just to blow and the note should happen. So first of all, we'll just get the air going through there and then hopefully the note will form. So let's go back to the chop scale. So. And that's pretty much it. Now, the Caruso six note part of it comes in where I want them to learn to articulate with this chops position as well, and or this embouchure position rather. And what we'll do is we'll do I'll pretty much, what we'll do now. We'll do a few just now. We'll play the note, and then we'll move down and up and down and up. So it's basically an expanding scale chromatically, kind of like the William Adam type thing, etc. But they're learning that their embouchure is ready to go, and a big part of this comes down to the ears. I'm trying to remember what I said in this video because am I copying myself, repeating myself in the video, or is this what I did in the previous video that I had to trash because the audio was all messed up? I like to think um, about the concept, basically, of a triangle, pyramid, whatever you want to think about it where we have essentially three components. <coughs> now, the first component is always right here. That is out there. We can't be anything without that thing inside of our head. Mind, brain, whatever you want to think about it. The next one, which is really, really important, is our air. Without air, we're dead. We're just huge, big sacks of meat and flesh and water and bones and what we had for breakfast and dinner etc that's all that is we need the air in and out of us so breathing massive part of it breathing and mind go very very well together the rest the third part of this which can be broken down into loads and loads and loads and loads of different little aspects so we have our embouchure we have our tongue we have our jaw position we have um, our finger technique, we have all that stuff in there, that little corner there. And that's quite an important corner because that kind of ties everything together. Because like, when we just have the mind and the air, we talk, we just we can sing, we can do that type of stuff. But the component, the mechanical component of it that actually, actually allows us to interact with music through the trumpet, not really including the gear in that or the equipment, is obviously everything we do to make that little bit of metal respond musically. So I like to think about that little pyramid there. I've almost lost my train of thought. And the point of this in terms of just trying to get everything working is you tie it all together with a breath in through the nose. You're already thinking about the sound and the pitch that you want to hear, which is a huge, huge part of it. We'll come on to this for a little bit of a, uh, the more advanced players in just a wee minute. <clears throat> and then we engage it all. And the third part should actually take care of itself. So the tongue position, 
the jaw and everything as well, if we've aligned properly. And, and we should get a note coming out right through the centre of all this stuff. So basically, this is it. So we'll do it super slowly, first of all. We'll go back to Chops Cam. Here we go. So teeth together. Lips down. Nose breath. And what I'll try to get them to do after that as well, once they played the note, think about where the jaw position is. You know, has the old jaw and it? it's come back here? Has it gone forward? Or it stayed in place? Have they stayed with their teeth closed? Just to try and think about what's actually going on. Um, I, I was finding that essentially I was going pa, pa, I'm bringing my jaw back and then trying to compensate in various other ways. I notice this more if I'm cold or tired and that both lips don't want to respond correctly. So this is where the six note aspect comes in. So it'll be breath note, tongue, tongue. And the reason for that is to introduce some gentle articulation with the jaw in the exact same position and the arm in the exact same position just to try and sustain the note. And so we're learning the pitch very, very, very basically. So we'll do a couple of these now. Um, yeah, You won't kind of see it because my finger's going to be in the way. But we've got a chops cam anyway. So... And then they obviously can take the instrument off their face and do them with the metronome. This with the metronome, fantastic, why not, you know. And then down to sharp. So teeth together, instrument against the face, or lips together, relaxed, instrument against the face. Open the jaw after you've taken the breath in. And then we move up. So next one, on to G sharp. Next one to first valve, F. Same again, teeth together, lips together, breath in through the nose, relax the jaw just before we go to play. from the side. So this would be A. Teeth together, relaxed lips, breath in through the nose, relax the jaw open, trying to keep it in the same position, forward. So that is pretty much it. And Again, the aspect or the point of this really is <coughs> the younger students who are who are not used to, to playing intervals and strange pitches and flying all over the instrument, etc. They, they still have to learn where the notes are. And that was quite a big issue with um with, with a few of my students in terms of that you could put you could put a page in front of them and say, play that note. And there'd be a line, let's say it went G A B G C B A D G. They would play that fine because it was all linear and there was no real break in the note. But if they had to play something like G A D B G, then the pitches might wander. The G might become a bottom C. The top B may come out as an F sharp. So that part within itself kind of got me thinking as to how do we get around this. Now, in terms of um in terms of the more mature students, going back to my story about coming in that high note, hearing the note and really, really thinking about where you want to go with it. 
and not using the tongue to really just like knock seven bells out of it and, and hopefully get it. Because that in itself can cause problems, overcompensate, you can split, you can over pitch, you can under pitch if you go ah, big wide throat and you've not got the correct compression in your, your mouth, etc. Modifying the modifying the actual um lesson throughout pitches, etc. is really, really simple. So we'll do a little demonstration of this. And I'm aware my bandwidth is absolutely all over the place, which is really, really annoying. So hopefully the actual video itself will sort out once YouTube has got a hold on it. Anyway, so when we are practicing our pitches, okay. So let's do fourth. This is what I did the last time round. Um, we will go to chops cam. Okay, so let's think of um, do a G first. So. Trying to breathe the note in. Ah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, yeah, let's come back away from Chelsea. So the, the breath attack. Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. So the breath attack component of this, which is kind of the whole point of the damn thing. The breath component part of this, if we can breathe the note into existence, no matter where it is on the instrument, really helps us set up the part of our embouchure that's linked to our ear and our air and everything else so that the correct note speaks when we want it to come out. A big part of it is hearing it and knowing where the note is and having the faith that it's going to come out. <laughs> I suppose that's where every component works together and you just know it's going to be there. So let's have a little go of this. What we're going to do is I'm going to do, let's start on a G and we'll go up and fourths, because fourths are quite easy to hear, and it, uh, it should be quite easy for me. So, we don't have to necessarily do the the teeth component part for this, but I will anyway, because it helps, it's just practice for me anyway, here we go. So, we we'll start on a G. I never blown too hard. Always trying to think about the note. So still no tongue here, up to a B flat. So up to an E flat. Ba. Do that again. Not too bothered about the note falling away. That's a support thing. The starting of the note is really where we want to get to. So let's go for E flat. Ba. Etc. So that little exercise there, once you get those notes, you know, then you can gradually start to build them. I'm going to name drop again the exact same as I did in the last video. I remember back at college during the 90s, <coughs> um, Brian Davis chatting about practicing high notes. And I remember him saying, just just try breathing them in, just get them tiny, tiny, tiny and making them, making them speak and etc. And then gradually they'll grow. And it says that in the 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 Maggio system that um, Carlton Macbeth has produced, etc. That I'm working from just now as well. But also, there's, there's loads of people out there saying that type of thing. But but this little exercise in itself, in terms of like finding our set position for embouchure and how it ties in with the sound that we have in our ears and the mental attitude and the air and everything, etc. That really is built in the basics of the little exercise that I'm doing with my students just now. And you can take this exercise and you can <clears throat> you can modify it through note bending, um, 
use it to start off interval training, Wh whatever it is you want to do. I will say one thing though, it's like, it's one of those things where probably, um, don't do it too much, less is more, etc. Because one of the things that we can really, really get into, I suppose, is like, you, you can kind of like get too wound up in one thing. I do this at the beginning of my practice is just try and make sure everything's set. If there's a particular note or passage or phrase, whatever, where it's not sitting properly, then maybe just like tiptoeing around that with this type of thing will, will really, really help. But we have to always be careful about not squeezing the lips together to get this to happen. So that's a real, real big no-no. And once you do start squeezing the lips together, then all manner of things can go wrong. That's why I was starting low with the kids and just thinking about it. So, I mean, on that note as well, no pun intended, intended trying to think about this part here, just like when we're doing the closed teeth thing at the very, very beginning. So... There's no tension there whatsoever. The only thing that's going to react there is when the mouthpiece is against it and the air coming out of me reacts to the air that's already in the instrument. And that's what happens there. And we, we can control our aperture. We obviously learn to control our aperture uh, for volume, etc. And really that's where a lot of that sound comes from. When we're playing these softer, higher notes, so even just like on a C, I do this, can do this handed. It's the corners here that are actuated. There's nothing going on in the center here. That's that's purely interacting with the component that's outside my body. Okay, I'm going to call it a night there. I think I'm getting the din your dinner's ready message on my phone. So Hopefully the video for this wasn't too much of a an issue. I know the sound was the last time. I should be recording all these in OBS as I'm doing it, and I keep forgetting to do that. And then I can upload them to YouTube or re-upload them here, whatever. But I hope you found that um, interesting. I would love to get some comments if anyone does watch this and your thoughts and takes on this technique. There's loads of us out there really looking at trumpet playing maybe a little bit too much underneath the camera underneath the microscope just now and really the point of this video is not the geeky side of it but it was about helping my younger students think about pitching the note relating their embouchure and their setup here to the sound that's coming out the end of the instrument and really that's all we all want to be doing and if you if you can't really hear what it is you want to be playing then how do you know what it's going to sound like when you when it comes out the end of your trumpet? Or flugelhorn, or cornet, or baritone horn, or trombone, whatever it is. And taking the time to explore little things like this are very, very important. The teeth closed thing is a, is a very, very, very nice and interesting concept that um, if you're looking to explore more, check out Tristan Button that he's got a whole bunch of stuff going on that just now and Alan Summer as well and there's more people out there that can remember looking into all this type of thing but for now just try and think about these breath attacks on the notes they might help you don't do it too much it might work it might not pop me a message if you want to go into it more I've pretty much said everything I have got to say about it just now um, I've also got the YouTube channel, guys. Um, the content for Maggio is gradually coming to an end. Um, I have got the last two lessons to put up. Um, the warm up D video is on here already. I uh, have to edit that and put it onto YouTube as well. So that's in the regular lesson format with the titles and everything else. And that's it. <coughs> I'm out of here. I think it's dinner time. And I will be back here again with another little fun video. If you want me to cover anything, pop me a message either on Facebook or if you have more my personal information or do it through YouTube, send me an email. Uh, cg.trumpet at hotmail.com. 
Um, and enjoy the rest of your evening. I'm going to go and eat some food now, which is one of my favourite pastimes. Bye, folks. <laughs>